You're on the <laughs> D-Rock and Roll Radio Road Show here right. at uh, the Thank London you. Music Club. Uh, so we're going to do a live interview with uh, our guest, Rob Falsini. Thank you, Derek. Um, Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, first, tell us, uh, where, did you, where did you come from just recently musically? Well, um, it's hard to say. You know, I, I listened to a lot of stuff. And uh, what happened uh, started a couple of years ago when I was really before into um, uh, Tom Waits kind of music. You know, I, I listened to him and the ballads he wrote in the 70s. And um, I, I, I was stuck a bit in that type of style, which I completely love, still love. But the, the songs were sounding uh, not really modern, if you understand what I mean. You know, it right. was really dated. You know, I didn't care much. I was just writing songs. And a couple of years ago, I started to listen to all these new songwriters that um, you know are in the scene. Uh, Passenger and uh, James Bay is amazing. Ed Sheeran and. Uh, and I got into Damien Rice, and, uh, and and the whole thing opened up, you know. And I, I realized that it's possible to write songs with acoustic guitar, be a solo act, and, and write something that sounds more modern, you know, along with the times, without necessarily pushing to be cool or anything, but just right. sound more what I what a I want to do. A natural modern. Yeah, exactly. Right. So uh, that's that's and my that influence that at the moment. That snow patrol. Snow Patrol. Uh, it, was, um, it was. It um, was. I, 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 I listened to them uh, along the same period that was listened to all of the other ones. You know, when you're on YouTube, you know all the suggestion videos, you know, and all things. So I knew the song, of course, but I never really paid too much attention to it. You know, and then I was to a live concert that they did in, uh, I think it was uh, uh, Scotland or something like that. It was amazing, you know, with uh, lots of people singing along that song, and I understood why it was so popular. Right. So I said, that's cool, and I want to learn it. So I learned the song, and I started playing in Common Garden, that one, and it was doing quite well. And, um, and, and one day, I think it was April 2014, uh, this tourist from Austria uh, shot a video of me singing that song, and he posted it on YouTube. I found about two weeks after the video, and it was looking very good on YouTube, it was doing 2,000, 3,000 views a day, and I said, wow, that's cool, man, I never had a video doing so well, so. <laughs> and then it got shared by, um, by an American radio in September, and it went uh, crazy viral, uh, that's had like five million views in three months. I mean, that's when a friend of mine shared it with me. And yeah, it was, it was, in, it was insane, and it happened, everything. Uh, I sent him a message, because I knew that they were, they were sharing um, videos of independent musicians, so I, and, I figured, you know, I'm gonna try, you know, I wrote, hey, I got this video doing well, think about it, if you like it. They replied, they say, yeah, we like it, we're gonna post it. But then they didn't do it for about two weeks, so I thought they forgot. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, and I forgot myself too, I mean, I wasn't <laughs> really thinking too much about it. And, uh, and then it was, I remember it was a Tuesday evening, I go to sleep and I wake up on Wednesday and everything was crazy. I got like thousand, literally thousand messages on Facebook and, uh, uh, 10,000 plays on SoundCloud in one day, you know, and then it kept going on, on and on and on, until I got the point of 40,000 40, people following me on my page in the space of a few months, and I consider that I had 600 in three years before, right, you know, right, and then right. 40,000 in, in <laughs> yeah, three overnight months. Overnight, wake so up to that kind of... Uh, the power of YouTube. It's what the internet does, yeah. Yeah, yeah the exactly. power of... Uh, Social media. Make you international and... In, in, in yeah, the that's, that's the good side of it, you know, like everybody has a, has a chance, you know. Uh, Part of the driving factor in, in, in doing what you're doing now, this yeah, tour, yeah. And, and, yeah. and... Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, without that, uh, I, didn't, I would have not had the chance to, to do what I've done. Where, where are you from, originally? I was, I was born in Rome, uh, born in Rome. and uh, grew up in Italy and um, moved uh, to England uh, 15 years ago, something mm -hmm. like that. Spent three years in the States, um, and then just went back to England, and that's where I belong, so. Oh, okay, in the States, is that when you were doing the love? Re the I was doing, I was uh, the lead singer of uh, one of the show on the, you know, the Cirque du Soleil kind, kind of shows. It was the same director and composer and uh, by the time the, the director called Franco Dragone split up with uh, Cirque du Soleil because on the money negotiation thing. So he decided to go on his own and start his own company and he put on two shows in Vegas. One was uh, A New Day with Celine Dion and the other one was Le Rev uh, with a yeah. kind of similar Cirque du Soleil thing. You know, 75 performers, acrobats, clowns, musicians in a massive water um, stage. And, and I was chosen uh, by the composer because, I w again, I was playing in Common Garden and he had a flat just on top, you know, where, so right. one day he just came by and said, oh, well, can I talk to you? I said, yeah, of course you can. 
and uh, I didn't know it was. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, in Covent Garden there's a place where there's a lot of pigeons, you know, so you have to be careful because they. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I thought to the guy, yeah, we, we can sit down there, you know, but be careful because they can shit on you, yeah. you know. And so I didn't know it was. <laughs> So we sit down there, they didn't shit on us, and, uh, and he the offered the job in Las Vegas, and I couldn't yeah. believe, you know, so yeah, it was good. Very good, very good. Tell us about the USA thing. What's, what's um, going on about that? You're, well, you've booked this tour, you wanted to tour around uh, your international yeah, stuff. Yeah, they have a very, um, a very complicated... Um, yeah, it sound it sounded like it was kind of complicated. It, it is complicated. The problem is that I, I didn't have a band, I'm a solo act, so if you are a solo uh, act, you must be extraordinary and that means uh, successful and f popular and all the things to justify the fact that you want to play in the states well, there you go. Uh, i think it's a bit wrong policy because yeah. you know if i was really that successful or, or famous i was not going to book venues of 100 people or 50 people no, you know exactly. a, a famous rock star plays in stadiums <laughs> you know yes, yes. but i had to apply for the same visa that sting applies for you know uh, uh, I, uh, and all the all the people all the famous ones it's called o1 and uh I got close because I got a few articles, but they're mainly talking about me as a street performer. So they want to see more articles about me gigging rather than being a street performer. So they didn't deny the, the, the application. They just requested evidence that I didn't have. Right. So I decided to withdraw the application, not to risk a denial, because right. if you have a denial, you know, it's gonna be even worse. Next time you try, right. you see a denial and they might refuse straight away. So right. I, I, I left it there. He's on hold, you I know, gotcha. and uh, if I can get Gather more, some more evidence, yeah, if I get more evidence, I'll that. try again. And nice. if I get five, ten more articles about me gigging, uh, I should get it. So, so other places more than welcome to, uh, to yeah. have you. Uh, According to them, I have to play in the rest of the world to be granted the chance to play in USA. So wow, that, that's I a bit wrong morally, but anyway, that's the policy, and there's nothing to do. Yeah. Now, how long have you been doing this? Uh, 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 they call you street performer, so um, how long have you yeah, been doing the busking? Um, and, uh, about, uh, uh, professionally, that means make my living. Yeah. Uh, about 10, 12, 12 years. Wow, 12 years professionally yeah. busking down at the Covert Garden in, in the UK. Yeah, yeah. It's a special place where um, it's, a, it's a fantastic place to go. I know, and uh, 30 million people every year go there. Because wow. they know that um, there's a free, potentially free entertainment. There's not only music. There's a, there's a, let's say 75 to 100 regular performers there. Wow. Uh, they have to audition and get a permit. And we have an association called Street Performer Association. So we, we talk to the council and everything. Everything is kind of regulated. Is it? Is it similar to a job? You know, in a way. And um, so that place, people go intentionally to see shows. You know, and it's, that's the difference with many other busking. Beaches. So you can't just go there at any point in no, time? No, you, you can't. There's a, a, there's a, there's a spot a, or? Not really. I mean, indoors, where I uh, thankfully have a license to play, you have to book. And you can book up to four shows a week, uh, 40 minutes each. So that means you have a chance to work four days a week, guaranteed. Right. Even if it rains, it doesn't matter. Right. And the outside, on the weekends, uh, it works on rotation. So uh, depending on how many musicians there are, you can do maybe two, three shows in a day. And you do one hour and then, you know, but it's a place again where you know people go to spend the day, you know, families or whatever, you know, because it's full of shops, restaurants, and shows. That's nice. about uh, maybe a hundred shows a day over there. Wow. Very full of entertainment. Oh, it's fantastic! Keeps everybody if you go there, totally just go. It's, it's, a, it's an incredible place. Just to come and see the entertainment every day. Yes, it's yes. Be it's, it's, it's potentially free. You know, you can give whatever you want. Right, right. And right. You know, but the amount of people is so much that. Uh, you, you, you get something. You're not, not, not everybody pays, but you, when you perform for hundreds of people, you know, the chances right, that you're going right. to get good donations are higher. Are there. You know. Nice. Um, personal life, uh, married? Yep. Kids? Two. Nice. nice. And Seven uh, and five. Uh, their support on this uh, international tour, like this is something obviously very new for them as well, saying, yeah. hey, t t you know, have yeah, a yeah, good yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, they were, you know, they were more pissed off with me because I was going to Canada and they weren't. So, you know, yeah, yes, <laughs> so next yes. time we're going to try to go together, you know, and yeah. uh, travel a bit together. And um, uh, my wife works, so she couldn't, she couldn't come. And also financially it's difficult to, uh, you know, I to was just going to ask you, like, like that. Do, doing an independent, you're an independent, you don't have a, a, a tour agent, you know, have a booking I'm company, all by myself. you do all this yourself. Yeah. 
Um, what advice could you give to other up-and-coming performers who want to do some kind of international tour? Like, uh, um, I think the first is to try to use the, the, the tools that we have at the moment, which is social, social media. You know, it, trying to do a tour without exposure is very dangerous because unless you uh, know someone in each town that can guarantee you, you know, a good draw, is a is a potentially very risk situation, very S risky situation. Speaking so of that, you've had a lot of great support. Uh, in different I places I, I ask uh, in every town I go, I ask for a local act, you know, to help me out. Yeah. But if I didn't have the exposure in the first place, I would not have anyone coming. It would have been only the people of the local act. Right. And when you, if you do a tour like that, the risk is that after the local act is is done, all the people leave. Right. And you play for no one. Right. And you cannot headline uh, any, any place if you don't have a draw yourself. Right. So using social media, get, your, get a nice video done, you know, a honest video. That if you, the moment you see that he's doing better than the others, yeah. you try to contact all these social media platforms on Facebook, like Media News Publishing, uh, asking them, uh, you know, if you want to help independent musicians and share that on your page, I would be very happy, you know, I'm trying my best, blah, blah, blah. blah. And if they want to help you, they'll share on the page, and then you get the followers. There's a link to your Facebook music page, or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and then people start to know you. And then you have your own material, you share your material. The moment you understand that you have in each town at least 100 followers in each town, That's you might you want will. to try start booking a tour. Right. Yeah, plan, plan it towards where you, you see the fanship is coming from. Yeah, exactly. Right, because right. you have the, you know, the I, I look at the analytics you know, on the page, yeah, so yeah, I know exactly. uh, each town. That doesn't mean that all of them come. You know, of course, you know, yeah. it doesn't. It would be wonderful, but it yeah, no, it's no. never going to happen <laughs> in, in a real world. You know, <laughs> but if you book a tour where you have, you know, 20 people that follow you, the chances that they come are close to zero. But if you there are 100, 150, you can maybe get 50 people in the venue, and 40 to 50 is good enough to to tour. Nice. So it's okay. Where are you off to next? Uh, Toronto, tomorrow. Toronto, tomorrow. A couple more spots in uh, Canada yet? Uh, yes, then Ottawa on, uh, on Wednesday and Montreal on Sunday. And then I fly home. And then you fly home. And that's, that, that's your tour done then? Uh, for, yeah. For now? Moment, yeah, for now? I'll take a yeah. couple of weeks off without thinking of anything, trying to organize nothing. Uh, there's a friend who's, um, that I met in Liverpool on a gig that is, uh, is sorting out uh, a UK in Ireland and Scotland tour for March and April. So he's helping me out. I don't have to do it myself completely yeah. this time. So I'll take some time off, spend some time with the family, and, um, and then I'll start to organize something. I want to try to get into some folk festival in Canada in the summer and then do it again in September. Nice. Maybe a maybe slightly bigger one, so yeah. we'll see. Well, thank you, Rob. Thank you. Um, anything else you want to uh, share with us? Uh, uh, just you guys are wonderful. Yeah. I, I love awesome. Canada. I really awesome. love it. Well, we want to thank you very much for coming to Canada and uh, performing for us. And, and please be sure to uh, check out online uh, all the uh, upcoming shows he's got. And, uh, yeah, this is a live interview. You guys can clap if you like. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, my first, actually, live interview in front of uh. other people. So uh, thank you for that.